Welcome to Ditch Auto. My name's Jared, and this is my first look and initial thoughts on the Canon 5D Mark IV. Now, I rented this camera. Uh, I was able to get it really early, which is fantastic. And I got this in Friday, today is Monday, and I spent an entire weekend playing with this camera. I didn't even really touch my Sony all weekend. I just dove straight in to back into 5D world, which is where I come from. I shot with the 5D Mark II and the 5D Mark III for a number of years before switching over to Sony. So I was really excited to get my hands on the newest version of the Mark IV. So I wanted to talk about some of the features and some of the things that are my initial feelings of this camera. And then later this week, I'm gonna come back with a full on review talking about everything that I feel there is to know about this camera and the pros and cons of it. So this camera is the first update to, or the most recent update to the 5D line, uh, and it's been several years. Uh, Canon typically updates this line every three or four years, and it's been a while since they've updated this camera. Uh, I switched over to Sony because I felt that Canon just wasn't keeping up as far as getting features into their cameras. They just don't release certain cameras often enough. Um, and I want those new features, even if that means selling and buying a new camera body almost every year. But anyways, with the Canon 5D Mark IV, it's highly anticipated because it's been so terribly long since the last 5D update. With the 5D Mark III, there came forth a whole bunch of new features that really uh, brought the Canon into uh, this camera into a powerful video shooter. Uh, for those of you out there that shoot video on DSLR, the Canon 5D Mark III has just been a cornerstone in the industry as far as shooting video. And so what we're looking forward to a lot with the Mark IV is a lot of improvements there. And so here's my initial thoughts. Uh, we're gonna start with video and then we're gonna go and talk photo. Um, and I'm starting with video because for me, I've been more of a video shooter lately, even though I still shoot a lot of photography. Um, the features of a video shooting camera have been more important to me because I feel like you could do a lot with pretty much any camera out there as far as taking photos go. So as a video camera, my thoughts initially at looking at the specs were that this camera is a little bit of a letdown. Uh, one of the other bummers about it is if you are shooting 4K, you can't shoot 4K externally with this camera. So if you plug in HDMI into the side of it, the best you're gonna get is an output in full HD. 4K will not come out of the side of the camera. One of the benefits to some of the other cameras that are out there is that they do record 4K internally, but once you plug in an external device, you're actually able to get even better 4K externally into a recording device. With this camera, it's just not very future-proof, assuming that Canon won't make a Mark V for three to four more years. Um, I mean, three to four more years, everybody's gonna be shooting in 4K regardless, even if they're still delivering some stuff in 1080. And for me, I will definitely be shooting all in 4K by then. So in the side of this camera, you can put an SD card or a CF card in the side uh, of this. And they are making some faster CF cards these days. Um, but uh, personally, I've moved away from CF technology and am um, using SD tech card technology because the cards are getting really fast and I don't have any problems. But now I do have problems trying to shoot with this. So if you are gonna upgrade to this camera and you wanna be able to shoot in 4K, you're gonna have to invest in some crazy expensive cards for your camera so that you can even capture 4K at any, at any level. Um, so I was a little bummed with that. Uh, 1080, you know, shooting HD video with this camera. I was in, I was just as impressed as I've been with anything else Canon. It shoots really good footage. It's very clean. Uh, from what I understand, you don't have any, um, any log that you can go into with, uh, uh, I believe, you know, Canon has a log version um, with most of their cinema cameras, but in this particular camera, you don't have that option. Um, so there's no way of shooting just a flat image that is better for editing and post-production later for color correcting. With Sony especially, you're able to do that. And there have been previous versions of Canon cameras that you have been able to do that. So who knows, maybe that will come in a firmware. But right now it's kind of a bummer that they don't have that enabled in this camera off the get-go. Um, if I'm mistaken on that, 
correct me, but upon my inspection, was unable to find it. Continuous autofocus is pretty good. Uh, I've had some recent experience with a Canon 80D that has dual pixel, and so I was able to play with that for a little while. This camera does have dual pixel AF, and so that continuous autofocus is supposed to be a lot better than, than the non-existing autofocus that we experienced with the 5D Mark III. Um, so having continuous autofocus is extremely important because if you're using this camera to shoot video, whether you be handheld, have the camera attached to a camera gimbal or something like that, and you don't have somebody externally operating focus for you, the continuous autofocus becomes extremely important. And Canon has definitely stepped it up with their continuous autofocus. Now, as far as the autofocus itself, the autofocus uh, hasn't really changed a whole lot. They have improved on their system. Uh, but from the Canon 5D Mark III to the Canon 5D Mark IV, shooting photos and the autofocus, I didn't see much of, a, of an improvement, although I haven't tested it too much across you know, shooting sports to weddings and stuff like that. I have spent minimal time with it. I was, I was always impressed with the 5D Mark III autofocus, so I didn't think that they probably had to do too much to step up autofocus in the Mark IV. Uh, the Mark IV does seem to do a decent job of autofocusing in low light. The low light performance, which has been something that I've always chased in cameras uh, and was one of the, de the definitive reasons why I switched from Canon to Sony, um, the, the low light performance in this camera is drastically improved. It does a great job of shooting in low light. Now, paired with the 50 millimeter 1.2, which is the lens that I rented with this camera, this is a low light monstrous package here. The improvements in the ISO sensitivity of the sensor combined with a lens that goes as wide as 1.2, I mean, you could, you could practically see in the dark. The 5D Mark IV obviously shoots nice big photos and still is able to do a decent job in low light. It just doesn't have the performance low light that a Sony A7S II does. And I haven't ran it up against my A7R II yet, but I, would, I can safe, almost safely say that my A7R II performs a little bit better in low light than this 5D Mark IV does. I haven't done any scientific comparisons, and I probably won't, but in my opinion, my A7R II still performs better in low light than this thing. Now that we've talked a bit about video, and of course, you know, I've been showing you some video examples, and um, I'll do my best to put some more up. I can't make any promises because I do have to send this camera back relatively soon, and I wanna spend some more time uh, using it so that I could provide as proper of a review as possible. So video, pretty good. Uh, it doesn't have the, as good a stabilization by itself because there is no internal stabilization happening in the body and this lens doesn't have stabilization. So handheld, it's a very challenging camera to use unless you pair it up with a lens that has IS. It, it's a 5D, you just can't go wrong. I've got nothing bad to say about the Canon 5D as far as a photography camera goes. The 5D has always been great in any era from the first 5D to now. It's always been great as a photography camera and there's almost no way to challenge that. I mean, there's little things, not having an articulating screen on the back. I mean, there's little things that you could pick apart with this camera but it's a 5D Mark IV, it's, it's a fantastic camera. Before ending this, I just wanna say, like if you have a 5D Mark III and you're happy with it, and you're not needing you know higher video options like 4K, I would probably recommend just keeping your 5D Mark III. That's gonna be my initial thoughts. And after spending some more time this week with it, I may change my tune. But as I talk to you right now, a 5D Mark III to a 5D Mark IV, is probably not a valid jump unless your camera is getting long in the tooth and it's getting a little old and it's time to update it. Um, that might be a good reason, but the 5D Mark IV just isn't that far of a leap in technology, having been that it's been like almost four years since the Mark III was announced. There just isn't enough bells and whistles. Sure, it's got Wi-Fi and NFC, and I definitely took advantage of that this weekend. Sure, it's got dual pixel continuous focus, and I took advantage of that this weekend too using it. But as far as a photography camera goes, it's not enough, in my opinion, of an upgrade to justify going and dropping $3,500 for another camera body unless your existing camera is old 
or you have $3,500 burning a hole in your pocket. Please subscribe to this channel because later this week I'm gonna come back with a full review and I'll have more information, more photos, more video clips, and more of an opinion, obviously. So I recommend that you subscribe to the channel so that you get updates. There's links in the description below to where you can see this camera, this lens, and also if you wanna rent it before you buy it, which I highly recommend you do, check out the link in the description below where you can rent this camera and this lens and draw your own opinion. So that's gonna do it for today. Thanks so much for checking out Ditch Auto. Hope you subscribe. If you have any thoughts, leave them in the comments below and we'll see you later on Ditch Auto. Take care.